All right, so unfortunately at this point I've realized that a couple of my video clips were uh, were lost. So I'm just going to try and recap uh, what I did in those in those video clips. Uh, the, the first thing I wanted to mention was that after completely recapping the entire unit, uh, I discovered that the uh, the noise that had been present on both channels was still there. Um, so I started looking at touching up the solder joints on some of the transistors uh, throughout the, the unit and ended up coming across the fact that the, uh, the solder joints on a couple of the regulator transistors in the power supply were, uh, were bad. And just uh, reflowing those solder joints took care of the noise problem. And then, uh, then the unit sounded just fine after that. You can see that the display now comes on and functions, but is uh, still overly bright. So I'm going to shut that off just to uh, protect the display from getting burned out and uh, continue trying to troubleshoot what's going on. I expect that there's a short in here somewhere uh, that I caused uh, while I was uh, recapping the unit, uh, but so far I haven't been able to locate it. Okay, <clears throat> I believe I have uh, corrected the problem with the display board. When I turn that on, you can see that everything is normal. No extra segments are lit. And when I turn the mode switch, everything seems to work normally. And uh, what the problem was, was a um, misplaced component on the uh, component side of the display board. So let me uh, let me pause here for a minute and uh, I'll show exactly what happened. Alright, I've got the display board disconnected and uh, flipped over so that you can see the component side of the um, display board. And uh, pins 1 and 2 go to the uh, the mode switch right here and then uh, there is a bypass capacitor or a couple of bypass capacitors soldered with a wire between uh, these pins and pin 5 which I believe comes in from the power supply and uh, what had happened was while I had been replacing capacitors things must have got disturbed in here and I don't really know how visible it is there but uh, one of the leads of one of the bypass capacitors kind of got shoved around and was touching one of the the other pins and it shouldn't have been so uh, all I had to do was just move that out of the way so it's no longer touching and uh, everything is now functional again okay now that I've got this unit all back together the display is functioning properly and the sound is good. Uh, I need to uh, do these couple of adjustments here that are in the service manual. So I've printed out the, the page here and the first one is the idle current and I think sometimes people refer to this as DC offset uh, uh, adjustment and then also uh, there is an adjustment to kind of calibrate the, uh, the indicator to uh, get that all uh, in line. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, the idle current and uh, it seems like it's just a simple matter of connecting the digital voltmeter here to the right uh, pins on the board and adjusting the variable resistors which you can kind of see there. I think those are for the left channel. So there's a couple of test points there and those variable resistors. So. I'll get everything hooked up and uh, start making the adjustment. Okay, so I've got two meters hooked up with the uh, the right side meter being connected to the right side channel and the left side meter being connected to the left side meter. And uh, aside from the, the right hand side meter being a little jumpy, um, what I've done is I've gone and I've already kind of tweaked the two variable resistors right there for the indicated 53 millivolt setting on the right channel and what I sort of found was that uh, 
VR6, which is the one sort of on the left, is more of a coarse adjustment, while VR5 is more of a fine adjustment. And uh, you can see this thing is sort of bouncing around, and I'm not sure if that's the meter or uh, if that's the actual current. The meter on the left seems a little more steady. So now I'll go ahead and adjust the left side uh, current for the 66 millivolts that the manual is calling for. Okay, so again I've adjusted the two pots on the left there and uh, I seem to have 66 millivolts on the left hand meter and the right hand meter seems to be creeping up and uh, I sort of trust the uh, the left side meter a little more than the right side so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to power the unit off I'm going to switch the left hand meter over to the right side channel and adjust the right channel using the fluke meter okay so there uh, there you can see I've got the meter set to uh, 53 millivolts now on the right side channel and uh, one thing I don't think I mentioned before is that um, I let the unit warm up for about five minutes uh, for everything to kind of stabilize before making the adjustment uh, it seems to it seems to take that long for everything to kind of stabilize um, so anyway right right channel is 53 millivolts left channel is set to 66 millivolts and uh, now I'm going to move on to the um, the adjustment for the display and uh, I don't really have the equipment needed to do this properly um, so I'm just going to sort of wing it and uh, try and make sure that uh, everything is equal um, the actual indicator may be off you know in accuracy because I don't have uh, I don't have enough 8 ohm resistors uh, to use, nor do I have a way of uh, inputting a uh, 150 millivolt 1 kilohertz uh, signal into the thing accurately. So I think uh, the best thing to do is just, uh, you know, tr do make do with what I've got and uh, just adjust for what looks right. And uh, I, I think that'll be good enough. Okay, so I think this is probably fairly good. It's accurate enough for what I'm doing. Um, just pause this before the music police get us. And uh, so all I did was make the two adjustments. This one is for the left channel, and this one is for the right. And uh, I assumed that uh, they were fairly accurate as far as the average power reading goes. And I just tried to even them out as best I can. And uh, without the proper test equipment, you really can't do this right. But I think it's going to be close enough for for what I'm going to use this thing for. Uh, okay, so here is the SA7800 all put back together and uh, sounding as good, if not better, than new. So uh, yeah, there you have it. Everything is uh, fully functional and uh, cleaned up, with the uh, the exception of the case. The uh, the veneer on this thing is a little bit rough. It's uh, it's kind of peeled back in places, and uh, even on the bottom, the the press board is starting to separate, as if this thing maybe uh, was in a humid environment for a while. Um, but for the time being, I'm not going to do anything with the case. Um, I'm going to try and uh, just leave it as it is. So that's it for the 7800 for now. I think I'll just uh, hook that up and uh, enjoy it for a while. 